Hi, I'm Michael Yong from Sony, and in this video, I will be going over a paper titled Intriguing Properties of Generative Classifiers, which has been accepted into the ICLR 2024 conference. If you are interested in the intersection between AI, computer vision, and neuroscience, I think you'll enjoy reading this paper. This paper was published by a group led by Robert Geros at Google DeepMind. The link to the paper is in the description if you'd like to check it out. The paper is very accessible, and so I would highly recommend taking a look. When we talk about classification in the context of statistics, we can broadly divide classifiers into two groups, either discriminative or generative classifiers. Before we talk about generative classifiers, I will first introduce discriminative classification. And to get an intuitive understanding of discriminative classification, Let's use a scenario. Imagine you went fishing for the first time, and lucky for you, you managed to catch a fish. How would you go about identifying the fish? Using a discriminative modeling approach, you would first identify different features of the fish. For example, you might look at the size, or the color, or the shape of the fish. Next, using those features, you can then check whether fish that you know about have those features or not. The fish that has the most similar features to the fish you caught is then your best guess for what the fish is. More formally, if we let x represent the features and y represent the different types of fish, discriminative classifiers model a conditional probability py given x, in other words, the probability that the fish you caught is a particular fish given the features that you have observed. The reason I started discussing discriminative models first is because discriminative models are by far the most common method for performing classification in machine learning. This is because they are both fast and accurate, having surpassed humans on various image classification benchmarks and achieving real-time inference speeds. However, there are some limitations with discriminative models. Firstly, they appear to struggle with out-of-distribution data. By out-of-distribution data, I mean data that deviates significantly from the data used to train the model. For example, a paper published in ECCV 2018 looked at how the performance of convolutional neural networks change when shown images of animals in unfamiliar contexts. As you can see, while the model confidently identifies the cow in a familiar setting, it can no longer identify the cow when the background is changed to a beach. The second limitation of discriminative models is their bias towards texture rather than shape features. In a paper published in ICLR 2019, the performance of convolutional neural networks were evaluated when shown images with texture shape conflicts, like an image with the shape of a cat, but the texture of an elephant. In these scenarios, the models were strongly biased towards texture, while similar experiments on humans showed that humans instead tend to be biased towards shape features. Having discussed discriminative classifiers, let's now talk about generative classifiers. To get an intuitive understanding of generative classification, let's revisit our scenario. Using a generative modeling approach, we would first think about all the fish that we know about as well as their different features. We would then consider all of the features of all the different fish and compare that with the fish we caught, and our best guess would be the fish that is the most similar. More formally, again, if we call the features X and the different types of fish Y, generative classification involves first modeling the joint distribution of all the features in fish, which is PX, Y and then using that to find a conditional probability py given x for classification. To summarize, discriminative modeling focuses only on the differences, for example, is the fish orange or not, while generative modeling is more complicated because it requires understanding the underlying characteristics of different types of fish to then make a decision. With an intuitive understanding of the different types of classification, Let's move on to talk about generative models used in this paper. 
The authors evaluate three text-to-image generative models, which means these models receive text prompts as an input and generate images as output. I will now briefly introduce each model in turn, beginning with stable diffusion. Stable diffusion is a latent diffusion model, where the diffusion process is run in a lower dimensional latent space rather than in the pixel space, which is good for computational efficiency. You can see some examples of images generated by Stable Diffusion XL taken from the website. The second model to introduce is Imagine, created by Google. Briefly, a caption is input into a text encoder to produce a text embedding. The text embedding is then used as a conditioning signal to the diffusion model. The output of the diffusion model is then upsampled by two consecutive super resolution models to produce the final high quality images, as you can see on the right. The final model they evaluated is called Party, again released by Google. This is different from Stable Diffusion and Imagine because it is an auto regressive text to image generative model. So rather than using a diffusion process, Party models text to image generation as a sequence to sequence modeling problem, where an encoder decoder transformer is used to process text inputs to produce image tokens, which are then processed by VQGAN to produce photorealistic images. To summarize, the authors evaluate three text-to-image generative models, two of which are diffusion models, and one is an autoregressive model. Let me now explain how they were able to use these generative models to perform classification. Starting with an image to classify, the first step involves adding noise to the image. Then, the noised image, together with a text prompt that reads, a bad photo of A, and then followed by a blank space, are used as inputs into the text-to-image generative model. The blank space in the text prompt is replaced with different classes like dog or bird or keyboard. The model then generates an image using the prompts, and we compare it with the original image. And the final model prediction is the class whose image has the lowest mean squared error with the original image. The three models were evaluated on the model versus human toolbox, which contains 17 image datasets with associated human performance on those datasets collected under controlled conditions. To create out of distribution datasets, various image perturbations were applied, including simple parametric distortions like changing the contrast, color, or adding blurring or noise, as well as more complex non-parametric distortions, like using image sketches or edge maps. Now that we understand the models and datasets used, let's now take a look at the three evaluation metrics used. Firstly, to evaluate the shape bias, they used one of the non-parametric distorted datasets containing images with shape texture conflict cues. The degree of shape bias is measured as the fraction of images the model agrees with the shape label. Secondly, out of distribution accuracy is simply measured as the fraction of correctly classified images. Finally, Cohen's kappa was used to measure how consistent the model's errors are with human errors, where a score of plus one is perfect agreement and a score of minus one is perfect disagreement. Now that we've covered the evaluation metrics, let's take a look at the main results. The first interesting result is that in contrast to discriminative classifiers that tend to be biased towards texture, generative classifiers appear to display shape bias. All three models outperformed the previous state-of-the-art discriminative classifier in terms of shape bias, achieving scores similar to humans. In the figure below, the x-axis is the degree of shape bias, and the y-axis corresponds to different classes. As you can see, the generative models are aggregated on the left-hand side, with Imagine displaying greater shape bias than humans for some of the classes. Next, let's take a look at the out-of-distribution performance. In terms of out-of-distribution accuracy, discriminative models remain state-of-the-art with the vision transformer achieving superhuman accuracy, as you can see on the far right of the plot. 
Imagine in stable diffusion achieve accuracies close to, but still less than humans. The authors analysed the different image distortions to see whether there were any cases where generative models seemed to systematically perform worse than humans. And what they found was that generative models seemed to perform comparatively worse on rotated images, as you can see on the right. Now let's move on to look at error consistency. Generative classifiers, specifically Imagine, achieved state-of-the-art error consistency with humans, outperforming previous state-of-the-art discriminative models. However, there still remains a large gap between human-to-human -human error consistency and AI-to-human error consistency. As you can see on the right, discriminative models have high error consistency with one another, while generative models appear to display higher error consistency with humans rather than discriminative models. Finally, let's look at a qualitative evaluation of generative models in the context of visual illusions. The reason visual illusions exist is because visual information is often ambiguous. In 2015, there was a viral photo of a wedding dress where some people saw a blue and black dress, while others saw the dress as white and gold. In this paper, the authors use bistable visual illusions where the same image can be perceived in two different ways due to its inherent ambiguity. To provide evidence towards whether generative models were able to understand bistable visual illusions, the models were used to reconstruct both variants of the visual illusion by prompting the model differently. We can see that the models are able to faithfully reconstruct the different variants in the same location and pose as a human would. With the main results discussed, let's move on to the summary. Here is a summary of the main highlights from the paper. Firstly, generative classifiers display human-like shape bias. This was particularly true for the diffusion-based generative models. And in another experiment, the authors showed that adding diffusion-style noise to the discriminative models improved their shape bias. Another way of thinking about shape and texture is in terms of low-frequency and high-frequency image details. It is possible that the diffusion noise may disturb the high frequency or texture details, which then forces the model to instead focus on the low frequency or shape features. Secondly, generative classifiers show near human level out of distribution accuracy. While we can think of discriminative models as being fast but sensitive, perhaps generative models can be seen in a complementary way as slow but robust. Their speed is probably the main reason why discriminative models still continue to dominate image classification. Thirdly, generative classifiers show state-of-the-art error consistency with humans. That being said, there is still a large gap between AI and humans, and it would be interesting to analyze specific cases like rotation where these gaps exist. Finally, Generative models show understanding of certain perceptual illusions. It is important to bear in mind that we should be careful with how we can extrapolate this to the way humans understand perceptual illusions. It is unlikely humans also use a diffusion-like process to understand objects, but perhaps we may rely on similar representations, like the ones used by these models. To finish off, I would like to leave you with a quote referenced in the paper. While I have been discussing discriminative and generative models as distinct entities, perhaps the key to understanding how humans display both fast and robust object recognition is through the unification of these approaches. Thanks for watching.